Selectman's meeting for April 18th, 2023 to order. Uh, just a note, in a moment we will go into executive session and we will return to open session no later than 6 p.m. Can I get a motion to go into executive session? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move uh, that we vote to approve uh, entering uh, executive session pursuant to general law of chapter 30A, section 21A2 to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel and to conduct contract negotiations with non-union personnel Position of Finance Director, Town Accountant, and Town Administrator. Second. Moved and seconded to go into executive session as read. Roll call vote. Larry? Aye. Don? Aye. Mary? Aye. Julie? Aye. And I am an aye. It is a vote, and I so declare. I'm going to call the Board of Selectmen's meeting for April 18th, 2023, back to order. We started tonight's meeting in executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations <laughs> with non-union personnel the finance director and town accountant, and the town administrator. Um, no decisions were made. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, stands one, nation, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Public comment and announcement. Anyone on the board? Um, Mary? As you know, we're no longer going to read the openings. Uh, last week I talked about voter information. This morning I thought I'd highlight two of our committees that have openings and they're both related and that's the issue of housing. Uh, with the untimely loss of Larry Brophy, we have an opening on the Affordable Housing Trust and we still have an opening on the housing committee. So I'd ask anyone who has any interest in housing to consider applying for one of those. Come join us, be part of the solution. Um, so I ask you to look at those applications and you can fill the form out from the website. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Anyone else on the board? Motion on the consent agenda, please. Mr. Chair, I move that we vote to approve uh, the Board of Selectmen meeting minutes for March 27th, 2023 and April 3rd, 2023, and also that we vote to approve the recommendation of the Assistant Town Administrator to grant permission by NSTAR Electric Company, DBA Eversource Energy, for the purpose of installing a 40-foot plus or minus of one to three inches conduit and two proposed handholds uh, under the road at 43C Street. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Uh, one comment. On the uh, first set of minutes, the uh, March 27th, the minutes themselves aren't dated. Why am I having a date for that? That's right. Yeah. I think that was in the motion. Yeah. And Megan's writing. Any other discussion? Aye, All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Uh, new business. Interview Kathleen Barrett for consideration of appointment as finance director, <coughs> town accountant. Kathleen, if you want to join us at the table, welcome. Thank you. This is great. We took a lot off the agenda, so we didn't fill the room tonight. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate. Thank you. Well, w welcome. Like Thank I said, you. Um, you come highly recommended by our assistant town administrator and our town administrator. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we, we are not blind in the start of this conversation. Oh, at least. good. Good. Um, so we're just going to, we've pre-prepared some questions okay. and other board members have questions. Oh, terrific. And then in the end, it's do you have any questions for us? Uh, Larry, I'll start with you. Well, I want some guarantee your questions for us will be relatively simple. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Great resume, by the way, and Thank nice, you. nice background. Thank and you. thanks, again, I agree with Michael. Thank you very much for applying for the position. In one of your, uh, uh, your resumes, you commented that you developed and, uh, and monitored uh, financial policies and procedures. That's interesting. How did you monitor the uh, policies that were put in place? Um, that's a great question. So we, uh, when I first started in Sandwich, we were in the middle of updating the new financial policies and procedures manual. So in going through that, you know, you realize, you know, things have changed and so we update them. Um, and in my role in the accounting department, we, you hate to say it, but you're kind of the wet blanket. You have to, you know, really. You can say it, that's why. <laughs> <I like it. laughs> 
So the role is really to make sure that we work with every department, that they are understanding the policies and procedures first and foremost, that's key, and then help them to implement that. So we work collaboratively you know, with every member to work on those because they really is, um, every department is involved uh, in you know, financial aspects of the town. So it's really a matter of um, being involved in all the transactions enough to know that you know, things are being followed properly. Because that's okay. the biggest key. <coughs> Fantastic. And then the, I'll follow that then was another comment you made in, in that you helped train others. It was that part of, did that roll over to the training? Yeah, like formally Aspects and too. informally. Yeah, that's like the biggest key is, uh, you know, we work collaboratively, you know, uh, on a daily basis really. Um, but we've had a lot of formal trainings as well. That was my biggest, um, one of the most important things that I thought because uh, I talk a lot about uh, with everyone I work with about the why. I know it sounds like a strange thing in accounting, but um, it's not just because, it, but everything serves a purpose. And to explain to people why, it really helps them to understand what their role is in what they're doing why they do it and it kind of helps them sometimes take the next steps rather than here's the 15 things I need you to remember and don't forget a single thing. <laughs> so um, that has really helped and people can understand their role in the department they're in and what other departments do. It's, it's um, we made a lot of progress, you know, and uh, pushing forward, you know, like more collaboration and understanding. And uh, we've really, it's, it's been nice. We've developed more uh, mutual respect and appreciation for each other as well. And that's been like the biggest, um, almost unexpected benefit where they're, they're like, oh, you're not just difficult. There's really a reason why you do <laughs> what you do. <laughs> and they're like, I can and see it's a that's good a reason. positive outcome, yes. Yes, exactly. But yeah, they're like, it's actually a good reason. Now I can see why. <laughs> so. okay. Okay. Well, good. Thank you. Those you're welcome. Answer. Done. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mine starts out with a statement, but it's going to get to a question. Uh, real quickly, I must, I mean, I'll admit to being somewhat of a fossil. I was here when the position was created in, in the mid-2000s, and it was always contemplated, I mean, irrespective of the fact that the existing town administrator and the town administrator interviewed you, it was always contemplated as a parallel direct management report to the Board of Selectmen. It, it also gave the public confidence that if the same, thing, same outcomes were coming out of your mouth and the TA's mouth, uh, it, it, it gave confidence to them. Given where you're coming from, and that we're not really, we wouldn't expect you uh, to know everything that ever happened at, uh, everywhere. If you run up against, I'm assuming you're not someone who's afraid of saying I don't know. So if you don't know, where might you seek out information uh, that would be helpful to you in a particular situation? Um, well, I find, you know, the institutional knowledge is always, you know, the greatest key is to get the perspective of the people that you work with and to get their perspective. But there's also, in municipal finance and towns in general, there is just a wealth of information that's always accessible. It's town meeting, you know, uh, minutes, uh, you know, board meetings. It's, you know, I've done a lot of research um, over the years. I had to uh, kind of recreate the wheel on a project, so I was pulling out meeting binders from the 80s, you know, and things like that. And, and it was wonderful, because you have access to all that information. So if the people who were involved, you know, are no longer there, you kind of have, like, their, their breadcrumbs, as it were. They kind of leave you the information. So, you know, knowing kind of who kind of holds the keys for the information is, is invaluable, but also, you know, we've been very fortunate that uh, it's not where they're like, you know, if you don't know where, you know, so-and-so put the folder, you'll never find out. Um, but yes, you're right, I, I've learned that saying I don't know is, is a good opening for things because um, there's a lot of people who are like, well, I don't know either, so let's find out together. You know, because it, it kind of helps you know, build collaboration and to work together and to be able to, you know, kind of come to the conclusion together, I think is, is even more helpful <coughs> to work as a team and, and uh, you know, someone knows where, 
you know, oh, I, I know this website has everything. You know, we're very lucky. You know, the state has a wealth of information. I'm very fortunate that they're, uh, they continue to add information. You know, I have uh, great relationships with the people in DOR who have been invaluable. You know, uh, I've worked collaboratively with um, the audit firm in my company, I mean, my town, rather. But, um, and I've, you know, other audit firms have also been, you know, great resources. We've always been taught, like, you know, ask permission rather than forgiveness. <laughs> so it makes the process a lot easier. But, you know, very fortunate in municipal um, settings that you have so many different resources. Go ahead, Don. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I wouldn't get hung up on the, I know you're sitting in Harwich, but uh, it, I, I, I am not convinced that we're the, the smartest people in the entire world and that if you learn our process, everything's going to be cool. Uh, I'm looking more in terms of, uh, especially since DOR guidance, uh, municipal finance in general is a moving target. Uh, the, uh, if you don't have them, I, uh, I'd like to see a willingness on your part to develop a network of reliable people, not just in town, but outside of town. DOR is a good start, yeah. but there are also a whole bunch of smart people in other towns that I would suggest it's a good idea to get to know. Yeah, we have um, probably bi-monthly now is the town accountant meeting, Cape and Islands, um, has been a wonderful resource uh, now that you know, the COVID restrictions are lifted. We're able to meet in person, work more collaboratively. Uh, I was able to network more with people at the school in Amherst in March. That was really helpful. Uh, you know, when you get off Cape perspective, there's all, you know, things <laughs> are so much different in different parts of the state. So I've been very, very fortunate. You know, there's some um, very uh, long-term town accountants and finance directors on the Cape that have been a wonderful resource for me. I'm, I'm very fortunate to to count them as uh, great resources and, uh, you know, because we all are, there's really not a whole lot of other people to ask, you know, in that role. So, you know, you're like, well, you, you have the software, you have this issue, you know, how do you handle it? What was, what's been your experience? So, it's, yeah, it's been wonderful um, to really have a, a group that I've got to know pretty well and respect that have been a great resource for me. You all set, Don? Yep. Thank you. Julie? Thank you, first of all, for coming and oh. talking with us this evening. Thank you. I loved seeing that you had a, all sorts of procurement background. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful news. <laughs> um, I guess y you have plenty of experience. I guess uh, I would focus on um, looking at our overall budget process and any areas that you think we, you could strengthen or, or or and don't be afraid to say where you feel like we may have some faults or some weaknesses. I guess, um, how would you best work on creating a budget with stability for the future, understanding what we're currently up against with wastewater, you know, and, and other particulars that are very expensive in our budget these days? Yeah, yeah, wastewater is, is such a big factor. Um, you know, the people have, in getting a little more creative, uh, one of the things that we did in Sandwich for budget purposes and like a uh, slightly different funding circuit is to um, create um, like parallel tax to CPA. Mm -hmm. So we lowered our CPA from 3% to 2% and then created a WIF tax. We were the first one in Massachusetts. And it's been well received and very helpful. You know, um, you know, wastewater is a it's a very daunting project mm -hmm. and requires, you know, very long-term project and <coughs> and, and uh, an inordinate amount of funding, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been one of the approaches that, you know, I've been lucky to be involved in early on um, and found it, you know, it's very successful. And, you know, every town's a little bit different, you know, insofar as, you know, some of the, the you know, the challenges that you face, you know, each department there's different budget issues or things that are changing and evolving. So getting to really know each department and really what their challenges are, I think really helps rather than this has always been the budget for this department, you know, we're just gonna maybe you add 2% to salaries and move on. Um, if you really to understand, I think, what that department does, 
you know, there are some things where they're like, we haven't used that off that expense line in 10 years, mm -hmm. but we have it there and we use it for extra office supplies type of thing. I mean, it's, it's quite, you know, and that's been one of the things that I've been working on is trying to make um, the budgets more user friendly because there's a lot of non-financial people that are reviewing them as well and they can get very <coughs> cumbersome they get kind of caught up in lines and lines and lines of accounts and numbers and spoil and it's really hard to see kind of the forest through the trees mm -hmm. as it were yeah yep. um and so i've been trying to consolidate mm -hmm. some of the lines as well to make them more appropriate um yeah. you know i had one on my department that was for repair of equipment. I'm like, well, the only thing I really have a problem with is my printer and I, <laughs> so I don't think I need a whole separate line item for every five years, I need toner, you know, so <laughs> it's one of those things, you know, so we've, we've kind of looked at it mm -hmm. to be like, just because this is how it was always set up, doesn't mean it's always the best way to move forward. No, no, I love, I love that approach. Um, and, and you're speaking to people who need as simple a process in terms of you know giving us the information because a lot of times we're looking at numbers and you know that's not our background and so anything you can do to simplify that would be very much appreciated. Oh, of course. Yeah, I think that's really important because it can be daunting. Mm -hmm. I mean, even when I first started looking at them, like I, I couldn't believe how many like funds and accounts and balances and you know reports. You're mm -hmm. like, it was it's overwhelming. It's a lot of information. You're like, I want to be able to get a sense of where we are and where we should, you know, mm -hmm. what the challenges are without, you know, needing an hour and a half class right. to begin the right. process. Well, so. that, thank you. And the only follow up to that is I saw that you have um, experience with revolving accounts. You know, we've had discussion on whether or not we have too many revolving accounts. So it'll be interesting to, to see where you think in terms of looking. Yeah. That kind of info if we do in fact have too many. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. I think people like are trying to segregate and like track things and they're trying to use that information to make decisions for the future. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they're like, if I keep it all separate, that's the only way I'll be able to track the information and it's not always the case. Mm -hmm. I found we have, we have just, we have some, but then we have subcategories and the account just doesn't make any sense. So that's actually something I'm working on mm -hmm. because there's so many that people are using all the wrong count numbers. <laughs> so, it's, yeah. so the whole point behind it kind of got lost in the shuffle anyway. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes, you know, explaining the process and really trying to figure out what people, like what's your goal? What are you trying to track and right. understand? And, you know, are you trying to, you know, forecast things? Like let's find a better process. Sometimes more is not always better. <laughs> Great, thank you. Oh, thank you. Barry. Um, you don't have to read them all. If you don't. No, no, no. I, I've just got a couple of my own. Um, good segue with you talking about uh, making budgets more friendly because um, I think around this table we're in favor of that. Um, two things to me are really important. One is the budget itself and our numbers and our financial position. And we are blessed by uh, how many years now with the uh, A plus audit. So we are in excellent condition financially. The other piece that I think we struggle with and perhaps haven't always done as well as I would have liked is being able to communicate those numbers in a way that um, the average person can understand. Yeah. And I'm talking the five of us and then, and then the public. Um, even people that have budget background, which I happen to have, I'm lost when it comes to munis. It's like a it's like a foreign language. Yeah, yeah. So I would appreciate anything that you think you could do to get us to some better way of communicating that information. My, my question around that is the second part of the job that I see is your communication with the, the department heads and the staff, us, the TA, how are you at building collaborative relationships with people? I've been uh, very fortunate that um, because I have a varied experience and I've done a lot of what other people have, 
it, I've been able to relate to them, to be like, I understand how challenging that is. And in my experience, like, you know, this is what I did to, to kind of work on it. Um, you know, I've, I work with just about every department in, the, in my town and uh, been able to really build good relationships and to work to understand some of the challenges that they're facing um, and kind of meet them where they're at. And every, there's a lot of departments that, you know, one requires, you know, just, you know, five minutes, somebody else might require two hours. Um, and it's to, you know, to really, some people aren't comfortable in town hall, they wanna stay in their department or their, their building and that's, you know, where we've met them and that's what has really worked because they appreciate, I think, the extra effort that you take to be like, well, come to my office or we're not having a conversation. It's like, okay, you want me to meet you, you know, out in the parking lot? That's works for me, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, some people don't like to sit down. They're like, I wanna walk and talk. You're like, okay, let's, you know, it's a nice day, let's go for a walk. So I think people really appreciate like the consideration of them as people first and then, you know, someone who's, you know, been tasked with a, you know, with working in a department and leading their group and kind of trying to, you know, their mission. So, um, yeah, I mean, I kind of getting to know people and know what their communication style, I think, has, has been the, like, the biggest factor. Um, and then being able to kind of meet the demands that they're looking for. And I, you know, I find meeting in person is very helpful. You know, with COVID, it was really difficult. You never, you didn't see anybody for a year and a half. You had to get to know people again. Um, and then, you know, so everything was email and you never know anyone's tone of voice. So once you got to like talk on the phone or meet in person, you know, I think that's very helpful, you know, to build rapport and respect and, and to kind of be able to work collaboratively rather than having any kind of, you know, misunderstandings. Okay, thank you. Nicole, any further questions there that we um, haven't touched on? Yep. Yeah. Um, Megan was uh, kind enough to share that you were smart enough to interview she and Joe as well as be interviewed <laughs> by them. So I'm curious um, wh what your impression is of the town of Harwich and what you see as our strengths and weaknesses, understanding you've had a short time to study this. Yeah, um, I've been very impressed with the communication, first and foremost. Um, I know everyone is busy, um, but Megan is a great communicator. That's been, it's very impressive. Um, I know that sounds, um, but that's the biggest thing is to understand, you know, to see where you are in the process, to see, you know, how they interact with people. Um, that's, you know, the people have been a really big factor. I mean, it's a wonderful town, you know, uh, been very fortunate to kind of get to know it. You know, sometimes you get in your own little world and you know, you go to the grocery store and work and that's it. <laughs> so um, been fortunate to kind of, you know, stretch out a little bit, which has been really great. But meeting with Joe and Megan has been wonderful. I mean, they're good communicators. You know, we were able to have, you know, a really good open dialogue. It wasn't like there was topics off the table or there was things that, you know, they really didn't want to, you know, didn't want to talk about. They're very open and transparent, you know, and it makes, it, you know, gives you an indication for that's how things are done here rather than, you know, we're, you know, talk about this stuff or, you know, um, and I found it to be very helpful. So I think like that's, with that, with, a, with good communication, I think you can, you know, really, there's, you know, just move up from there. You know, sometimes when people are very limited and closed off and they're not open to new ideas, you really can't make a lot of progress. So um, I think that was like the biggest factor for me, um, you know, in dealing with other towns. Um, you know, and my colleagues, you know, we all discuss the different, you know, the culture of our towns, you know, and there's big differences between, you know, towns. And, and that was what impressed me the most. Thank you. All set? All set. So just um, <coughs> one for me would be the supervision part of this. I know the job description that we put in 
it says that you work under the administrator. You don't. You work under the Board of Selectmen. Um, all of us tend to stay out of town business until we have to. Mm -hmm. um, the simplifying documents, which I think Julie brought up and Mary touched on, uh, we've all, I think, at this point been on the board long enough to be able to transcribe um, munis and other reports into something that the public can read. Okay. Uh, but we get asked often, a balance of an account or a balance of the CPC, and when you, when you get these things written in the financial terms, it would take two or three hours for us to decipher that and to be able to hand it to the public in a form that they can actually read. Yeah. As simple as how did you derive a free cash? Well, Harbor was over by this. This was, you know, a very yeah. simple spreadsheet right. is how I'm going to ask for the material at very least. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, tightening up our budget process. Every year it seems we get to uh, the 24th hour, we're scrambling to to get this and we have to educate the public before we go to town meeting so sure. so the supervision and working under the board of selectmen obviously um, Joe would, would be your peer and you will be mm -hmm. working alongside of him but the board of selectmen is the ultimate supervisor um, and we're charming <laughs> yes, you are. except for Julie no. <laughs> but she's not here often, so she's on vacation. Apparently, uh, take a lot of vacation. Uh, yeah, and other than that, I really don't have anything. So, uh, again, strong recommendation from Megan, uh, Assistant Town Administrator and Town Administrator. Um, so this is uh, one of those formalities, and and we reviewed a lot of applications, and you certainly came to the top of that. So, oh, that's good any to follow up, Larry? Not for me. No. Don. Yeah, I guess the first question is probably a good universal one that we kind of skipped over. It's a Megan-supplied question, but it's a good one. Uh, <laughs> that's a double, that, that's kind of a backhanded compliment. <laughs> I thought you could handle uh, it. <laughs> no, it's a re it is a good question. It, uh, the, the question itself is, uh, can you tell us what your understanding of position is and what specifically drew you to this here as opposed to staying where you were? That's great. It is a great question. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, as the town accountant now, um, you know, uh, you know, I enjoy my work mentally, but I would like to kind of expand that. Sometimes you can see that there's limitations for, um, you know, sometimes you want to make improvements, but it's not really in, you know, your lane, as it were. Um, you know, when I as I've grown and like experienced more things and worked with collaboratively with other departments, you're like, you know, I'd really, you know, I really enjoy working with the treasurer's office and assessing and, you know, learning the different process and, you know, um, overseeing them all. You know, would, I think when you're working, you know, the finance director position, you're able to kind of get ahead of things. You're able to do, um, you're not the last to find out. Um, you can kind of have more impact on things going forward, the budget, the uh, process, um, training, things like that, even like staffing and cross-training. Like it's, you know, you're able to, because kind of where I am, you kind of see where everything, um, how it all works, but sometimes you're like, oh, I wish I wasn't the last to know because I could have made your life easier and done something for you <laughs> rather than, you know, recreating the wheel sometimes. Um, so that's really what drew me to it is to, kind of expand you know it's a it's a wonderful opportunity to be able to um, you know move up in my career for my you know personally um, but I was really drawn to you know how 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 which is you know how everything is set up um, you know what the best approach is you know and just it's um, you know it's just a it's just a great opportunity you know um, I know that sounds trite sometimes but it would you know it is something that I was looking forward to do and I feel like this would be a really good um, fit for me it's it's kind of similar to what I know but it, and it, but it gives me the opportunity to expand a bit and um, you know to take what I've learned you know with helping the other departments you know kind of understand how things work together you know how helpful training can be you know, so people even get the opportunity to maybe, you know, they want to move to a different department or so. They have aspirations for something else. But if they don't understand or don't feel like they could because they have no exposure to it, you know, you kind of miss out on opportunities for people. 
So, you know, that's what I like to encourage. You know, I've had to, I encouraged a couple of my uh, people in my department to seek other jobs, which was almost a detriment to me, but it was better for them, you know, and we did that by working with the departments. And I was like, yeah, I think you would like that. And they were like, I don't know anything about it. I was like, well, we're gonna have a field trip today. <laughs> so, and you know, it's been very beneficial overall for the whole town, and I think that's really the goal. We do have one major advantage. <coughs> the biggest bridge you're gonna have to cross over is the Bass River Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> that works for me. <laughs> I'm gonna stay else? away from oh, bridges. Good. Anything else, Mary? No. Julie? <coughs> It's a pleasure of the board. Uh, Michael, I, I move that we uh, offer the position of finance director of town accountant to Kathleen Barrett, uh, pending contract negotiations, salary negotiations. Second. And background check. And background, and background check. check. Second. And that's part of the second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Five to zero. So you didn't ask us any tough questions. I do appreciate <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> I skipped that part. Oh. Do you have any questions for us? We could take back the vote. <laughs> <laughs> you be careful. No, no actually, you are, you're, I mean, I appreciate that you had, you all had uh, really insightful questions that you gave a lot of thought and time to. I mean, it's indicative of, you know, how you view the position and what's important. So, and it's great. I mean, being, knowing the kind of questions that you ask really shows me like what, like some of the challenges, but some of the good things to look forward to. And I appreciate your confidence in me. Okay. Well, thank you. So you'll uh, be uh, contacted by Megan or Joe, and you guys can start the contract process. And as soon as that's done, we'll we'll vote that. But, Excellent. Thank you. But thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Thanks appreciate for coming it. in. It's been a pleasure. <coughs> a little daunting, but still a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Is anyone here for the Sacquatucket Snack Shack? Anyone here for Red River Barbecue? Can I get a motion on D? Taking things out of order, I, I know, but that's what I do. I'm so confused. Uh, Aye. Which, Aye. which uh, B? D, sorry. Uh, Red River Bar with you. Um, Mr. Chair, I'd like to move that we approve uh, the, all of D? Yes. Okay. Uh, the following new applications for Red River Barbecue LLC, 787, <coughs> Route 28. Number one, the 2023 an annual Common Vintlers license. And number two, the 2023 annual weekday entertainment license. That would be 11 a.m. to 12 a.m. inside. Jukebox, radio, television, live recorded music, amplification, dancing by patrons, and live performers. Second. Okay, moved in second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. If you just want to introduce yourself to the board. Um, we've already approved it, so you don't have to say a whole lot. Uh, my name's Jeremiah Reardon. Great. Uh, grew up here on the Cape uh, from Orleans. Thrilled to be in Harwich. Yeah, looking, um, looking forward to coming over. Yeah, <laughs> looking forward to having you. Uh, we do have a um, uh, chamber uh, event next Thursday. If you folks want to come by, say hi. It'd be great to see you. Great. Um, I appreciate the vote of confidence. Big shoes to fill. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll be seeing you next week about a liquor license. Too, great. So. Right. Excellent. Nice okay. to meet you all. Thank you. Thank Best you. Of luck. Right, good luck. Thank you. Uh, all right, we're going to jump back up. Review okay. the request for proposals, RFP for 204 Sisson Road. We all have that in our packet. This is a draft looking for any criticism or changes. Uh, with that uh, mentioned, I'll start with Don. Hate to bring down the room already, but uh, and I've said this to her directly. I'm going to say it to all of you. This is in no way uh, a reflection on anything Megan did. She did a lot of work on this, and I appreciate that. Having said that, uh, this is just, I don't know how to put this. It, it, it's just unrealistically complicated for a, a bunch of artists uh, to do. I know that we got suckered into a nine page RFP that has all kinds of forms attached to it and everything because we decided to do a procurement. I'm still stuck on the, but if we had a rental schedule like we do in the community center, we only did it for one year, uh, and people wanted to re-up on renting, you wouldn't have the same complexity. This is just, I, I've said it in different ways, but this is daunting for some. The uh, people who have artistic skills, I don't presume, have these skills. It, it, it's, they're, most of them are already there. so. It's kind of daunting about you know what you bring to the town and how you can actually help. 
what you think you are doing to enhance the town. Some of these people just want an artist studio. They want to do their own thing and become you know, better artists. So mine's just an overall uh, comment is that I really wish there was a different process, that, that, that it was more collaborative and less stuck in mass general law. Thank you. Larry, anything on the RFP as presented? No, I'm on, uh, I'm not going to repeat what Don said, but I agree with it. I'd like to see it simply. <laughs> Wait a second, what, what did you say? You're not going to agree with it, but you I agree am. with it? I'm going to agree with it, but I'm not going to repeat it. Okay. You know, I, I'll weigh in before I get to the other two board members. Just um, simply that, uh, and we do have Kara online tonight to answer any questions that we might have. And I know Kara has been directly involved in this process, and Kara has spoken to the tenants of the building. Maybe not all of them, but most of them, I would assume. Um, Kara's input's been involved. This didn't just get born in administration and then given to us to to overcomplicate the public. Um, with that said. Um, I know it's hard to believe, but we have an awful lot of critics on that building. Uh, and I think that this formalizes, a pro this formalizes um, what we're doing in that building. And it also gives three years stabi stability at a time rather than um, it's not as easy as a room rental rate at the community center because we don't rent those long term. So complying with the law, as much as I agree with Don, because um, <coughs> legalese and, and everything that you have to get to for the process is daunting. But I don't believe we've left anyone in the dark. And I believe that we have offered some help um, on the staff level at very least. Our procurement people can't do that on um, filling this out. And then ultimately, it's our decision. Um, and, and, I've, and I'll say it again, I've not heard one board member say that they want to kick people out of that building. Uh, but we do have a community use that's going on there, and I think that the law speaks for itself, and we have to comply with that. And this is the mechanism to comply with that. And it does give, in the end, three years' worth of stability, at least, because I imagine the renewal process on a licensing agreement will be a lot easy. So I applaud Megan for doing what she's done, Kara for doing what she's done, and I have um, fortunate enough to speak to a lot of the artists today. Um, or a fair amount of the artists today, um, answered some questions, um, set some people at ease, I think. Um, I have a couple pieces of criteria that I would like to take out of this, but I do see why we're doing this and feel like we should be doing this and, and that our critics of this building basically are demanding that we do this. So we're trying to give them as much information and be as professional with this building as possible rather than them saying we have no plan. That's where I am. Uh, before I get into my criteria changes, Mary? Um, I, I had the same concern with the artists being able to, it's not that difficult, but if you're not familiar with reading these, it is overwhelming. My question was, I know Megan and Joe as procurement cannot help the artists. Can Kara or someone else on staff, because it doesn't have to be that hard, can they help? So the answer is yes, Megan cannot, Joe cannot. Yeah. Right, Megan? Technically, no one from the town can help them fill out an application for an RFP. There is a site visit date that will be proposed that people can come to and ask all the questions they want and we'll, we will all be there to answer those questions. Um, but with an RFP, any questions that are asked, you have to provide those questions and answers to anyone who has downloaded or received the RFP. Uh, so any questions asked during that session will be then provided to anyone who has downloaded the RFP or gotten it. So they'll be available to everyone. So that means Kara cannot help them. Once this RFP goes out, yeah. she should not be involved in the development of a proposal. Okay. Because she will be have her input to okay. the evaluation criteria. Should the artist have some friend, perhaps, that has some familiarity with that? Um, well, if, if, if I may just... Go ahead, Megan. Kind of uncomplicate the RFP. 
there, there's really just one document that needs to be provided that isn't an attachment or a form. Right. So what we need from an artist or a proposer is, is a few paragraphs on, on what they do, um, describing their art or their performance or how they want to use the space. And then the rest is, is a form. Um, it's a price form, a proposal form, um, a I've, I've paid my taxes form. Uh, so, so really it comes down to describing how you are eligible, which are bullet points on page two and three. So you're describing how you are eligible. You are an individual artist that's actively engaged in production, teaching, or creating works of art. You are a nonprofit or an individual. You are um, located on Cape Cod or preferences given to Harwich residents. So you're going through these bullet points on pages two and three in your one or two paragraph document. The rest are attachments that we are going to give you, that you are just going to read through and sign or put your price proposal in if that's something you choose to keep. So I know it's a lot of paragraphs uh, and page five has a lot of, we can reject your proposal if you don't include this and that. But there, there's really just a few requirements. We need to know your name and your email address and what you're proposing. Um, so there's, it can be daunting if you're looking through and, and looking at, you know, we're calling you an interested party instead of an artist. Um, but I don't think you would need to have a friend or hire someone to give us a proposal. It's, it can be a simple handwritten or printed couple paragraphs describing your, your desire to be there and what you want to do. Follow up, Mary? Um, no, I'm good for the moment. Thanks. Good. So I agree with all of you. When I first looked at it, I thought, oh boy, that's a lot. But back to your point, I, when I look at the forms, it's not so bad. I guess one question I had looking at this is when uh, price proposal form, but the document where you're putting your name and everything else in. Mm. If somebody is to say, okay, so I really want to be in my current room, which is, you know, whatever, <coughs> I'm just making up something, 201 for 400, mm -hmm. right? So on that form, they can put in their bid of 400, I'm willing to pay my 400 per month. If they're already in there, can they sort of put their room number? Yes, right. If, if they're already in there, they're already on a list that Kara has. Right. Um, so, and we're not looking to move. Forward. Exactly. So yeah. that was one thing that we dealt with with people, different worries that people had. And one of them was, mm -hmm. where will I be or where, am I going to be moved? Mm -hmm. So my thing is, if, if there's been communication of, look, this is what we have to do. And to the chair's point, we're trying to be as tra transparent and give uh, finance committee and all those others, you know, out there who want more info, we're trying to do that here. And I appreciate what we're trying to do. So I just want to clarify that if somebody's interested in whichever payment that whichever room they can put that number in there and we can adjust the price proposal form if it would make it easier or clear saying are you a current existing which room which room do you want to be in yeah just so that then they understand yeah. okay well it's not like I'm just going to get moved and then the only other thing I, I think is a little confusing because the RFP itself says you can just be you know an individual or whatever but I think in some of this, when I look at name a business, people might be like, well, I don't, I don't really technically have a business and I don't have a tax ID unless it's my social, mm -hmm. right? So I think maybe we could clarify that too to say, you know, tax ID or social security number, okay. whatever you're filing your taxes under. So that maybe it's a little, little less daunting if you look at this and go, well, I don't have a tax ID, I can't do this. And not that everybody will do that, but some people might mm -hmm. think something. So anything we can do to simplify it, I think, is helpful. Okay. Thank you. And I and appreciate your, all your work that went into this, too. Duh. If I find myself trapped by this, I, I need to say one thing. 
Where in this does it say that it's not assignable? Not assignable? Uh huh. I don't think it does. So, is that something you would like? Yes, yeah, subletting. It's kind of subletting, oh. but it's that it's assignable. It, it's not an assignable uh, contract it, it, or license agreement. It's with the particular party, and it's not assignable. So that the one document that's not in here because it's not back from legal is the actual license agreement, and it will be for a specific room, and, and it will say that it's non-transferable um, or no sublets allowed. Okay, that's just to protect us. Yes. And, and yes. similar language on the 30 days that we have now. And one, one artist I spoke to today wanted to make sure that with 30 days notice they could still get out or mm -hmm. we would have to give 30 days notice for them to get out. So I that, do believe that will be in there. Again, I haven't seen it yet, but it, it, we're not looking to change the existing rental agreement too much. Um, just make it up to date. Um, that would be... A 30 day notice on either side to terminate um, mutual agreement to extend. Just so we're all clear, is that the will of the board? Larry? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Don? For that question, yeah. Yes. Julie? Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, my, my, one of my biggest, um, I think, in spirit of what Don's saying as well, we've always wanted to keep who's in the building in the building. They were part of the fabric that built that building or built that program. So this isn't an exercise in trying to get the most amount of money. Um, though we're trying to show responsibility, last week we all, uh, consensus was to approve CARA's new rates. Mm -hmm. I see no reason to have in the RFP <coughs> that somebody could bid higher that it, and, it, and it would be highly advantageous. Uh, this isn't, for me, a bidding situation. This is our rates are our rates and we're going to approve whatever we approve, but it's not, in my mind, based on the highest bidder. I know that says highly advantageous in here, and so does if you've been a current tenant, that's highly advantageous too. And ultimately, this board's going to vote these licensing agreements, so we're going to have say until the very end on what we approve and what we don't approve. But I'm not that comfortable putting it out there so that somebody in room three could like room five space better and say, well, I'm, you're going to pay 350 I'll give you 650 because I can't. So I would like to see the price part of this not be a highly advantageous and more keeping with the spirit of trying to keep the community that we have in that building in that building. And, and with that said, um, there's people that have rooms that don't use them. So I thought the criteria on having to use your room because it's for the whole public, not just the people we have in the building. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying there's not going to be any changes. If you're a, a collector of all and you're using it for a storage room, that doesn't fit into the culture that we're trying to create. So by no means am I saying leave the building alone, but I think we have a department head that has worked very hard with this, a department head that has communicated with the artists and the people that are in the building, and this board that has said that they like what's happening there and now we've agreed on some rates so can we agree to not make this a bidding war Larry well you raise a good point which I missed because they contradict each other we, we've set the room rates and we voted on that you know car gave a good presentation we should live with that now vote on it and they say well we can bid that and you can supersede what we vote on as a board it doesn't make sense to me so Don I not only agree with that, but it goes hand in hand with the other part of this evaluation, the community involvement. I would argue that anybody, since we are doing this as part of a cultural district too, that anybody who's been involved in the furtherance of art and culture in the town, even if it's just for their own artist loft, is doing something that's highly advantageous because that's exactly what we were trying to do. This is a seed place to, for them to operate out of. Uh, I don't want to see a bunch of people that just come in and say, you know, I'm going to hold classes there and then kick out artists that have been there for two or three years because that's not really what we intended the building to do. It was, in part, it was a lab uh, to see if we could encourage people who were in uh, various types of art uh, to experience that. It's not, there aren't a lot of towns that nurture their art. Like, I mean, Orleans does, Provincetown does, but 
there aren't a lot of towns that actually have, I mean, we have an artist guild, but this is far beyond that. And I think we're covered by saying if, you were, if you're a tenant, that's highly advantageous. So but I, I, I would like the artists to know that community involvement shouldn't be a daunting thing. It's not like they go out and join the Rotary Club. Uh, it's that their mere pursuit of the artistic endeavor is a community involvement. And going very well, by the way. Mary? I, I don't disagree with you, Don, but I do think there's, I liked that there was some um, advantage to people that were doing things for the community because the the gig is to draw in the community, and it doesn't have to be a class. You know, I was chatting with Kara one day. It could be when those events, those open events are held, you know, are you there and do you make your space available to show people what you're doing? I mean, there's a variety of ways you can be involved with the community. I'm just saying it to throw a strong hint towards the people who are going to fill this out that that's how we'd view it. Yeah. So you're comfortable with the rates being the rates and not having this be a yeah I'm problem. okay with that I hadn't I hadn't really thought about this being a price war I, I hadn't gone there Michael Julie <clears throat> yeah I agree I mean the only thing I thought of was opposite someone trying to bid lower <laughs> <laughs> so Kara's not having that <laughs> so no I I um I think the rates are the rates and I I agree okay thank you. We, uh, Mary, go ahead. Could we get Kara? I was thoughts? just about to. Oh, okay. She's jumping out of her seat in her yard. Kara, <laughs> go, go ahead. Anything to add? Uh, no, I mean, Mary, you spoke to it. Um, the community involvement piece, when I've been questioned about it, has simply telling them, look, you are already doing it, which has been, you know, being present during our open studios when we've had that. Some of them volunteer for me for various events and some help me, you know, build or resurrect some crazy idea that I have. So really they're doing it. Um, I think everything that's been said has really definitely calmed the anxiety, I hope, because I know there's definitely a lot of people watching tonight, but, um, it's been nonstop since they've seen this draft. There has been a lot of anxiety. And Don, you're absolutely correct. They have, it's just beyond them. So it's been a lot of, you know, anxiousness in the building. So I think this definitely tempers some of that. But the, the price is, is a big thing. Um, no one wants to get into a bidding war for their studio. And that, of course, caused the question of, do we really have to be doing that? And are we really in that position where we're going to have to compete for our space? So. As long as we can kind of have some clarity with those, I think we're good to move forward um, as far as that goes. So that's my opinion. Thank you, Kara. Any questions for Kara, Larry? No, thank you, Kara. Don? Nope. Mary? No, thanks, Kara. Julie? No, thank you. Okay. The only other comment I had was based on the uh, language about a partnership. And, and I think it's really important that we spell out that we're not asking them to go form a partnership. So for the five or so rooms that are sharing space, that they that they're they're people they don't have to their partnership could be listing the three names um, it does not have to be a formal partnership with a tax id or an ein number um, so if we could clean that up and, and and hopefully they'll they'll get that the only thing i would say in the licensing agreement there has to be a mechanism if they're splitting the room three ways that Kara gets notified as soon as somebody decides to break that partnership and leave mm -hmm. Um, otherwise, I would assume the other two tenants would be responsible for the rent. And if not, we have to have a mechanism where there's a vacancy and we can put somebody in that room in short order so that we're not falling behind. So that's the only other part that I thought should be cleaned up. And outside of the long read, the actual requirement to fill out is not that bad. Um, and I know that some of the artists have spoken to other artists and they're working together which is not against the rules, to uh, mm -hmm. fill out the applications together and help each other. And I think that that's, that's great. Mm -hmm. But my message really to the people in the building is we, we, we recognize you're all part of the fabric of that building. And, and by no, we're trying to get um, to where we should have gotten to at the very beginning um, and make this a more formal process for the rest of the residents that are asking the questions and to comply with the law. Uh, anyone want to speak tonight on this in the audience or online? <laughs> Amongst the vast audience. So you just have to introduce yourself for the record. I will. My name's Ann Flash, and I am 
I'm kind of the artist here tonight <laughs> speaking. Um, I got, um, I was able to get a space uh, a few years ago in this, in, in the building and it's been, it's been so meaningful to me. I'm an artist, I'm a painter, and I'm also an adjunct professor at Cape Cod Community College. Last spring, I offered a, a college class, Zoom, from a studio, and I had a, a Harwich resident as a teaching assistant, and he worked in one part of the studio, it was still COVID, and I felt like, um, I felt like it was a really good, Good connection to make between the the cultural center and and the college. You know, it's um, and what what I found when this we were in the process of trying to figure out what is what's what's happening, where are our leases, and all of that. Um, <laughs> I felt compelled to come to a meeting. I'd never been to a meeting before. I'd seen them sometimes on on Zoom or on YouTube. But I was really impressed with and surprised, surprised and, and impressed by the support that I felt we had as a as a very loosely connected bunch of artists who are just who when Kara started working here, we, you know, it was, it was the beginning of a lot of things. There was there was ferment, and people were coming out of their, you know, sort of maybe post COVID. So we're just starting to get to know each other, and then, uh, and Kara, as you know, has tons of energy. Hi, Kara. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and it's sh what I heard from you as a board was. Um, don't let's not get in their way you know let's just let's let it happen and I really appreciated that trust um, and the sense of value that you were assigning I mean that you were recognizing in us and so I thought there would be other people here but I guess they're they're on um, they're remote and that's and I really appreciate your comments, I have, uh, you've probably seen me here a few times and it's been a real education. I was glad to hear that people thought this was uh, unnecessarily complicated. I, when I first read it, and I've, I, I've tried to read it three times, <laughs> and I certainly was surprised at the idea that if we offered a higher price than was listed, that would be considered a real advantage. And why wouldn't there be a bidding war? Why wouldn't someone, it, it seemed to be not at all in the spirit that I hear from the board in terms of supporting the cultural center, the municipal cultural center at 204. I'm not sure which order that that is, but um, I, I, I thought that was kind of the spirit of it. It seemed very small-minded, and and frankly, I've never run across that in all the nonprofits. I've been making art for about fifty years. I've always had a studio. There there have been times when I haven't had a very big studio, and my delight in having the studio here. Um, it's I can't tell you what it's meant to me to have that place and to go there every day. And even, you know, my house is for sale, I'm not, but I feel like I have a home there. And that's something that Kara has really nurtured and spoken to. And as a, you know, we've gotten together as a group. And I think that when Joe came and spoke to us about RFPs, and frankly, I'd never heard the term I went and looked it up. You know, I, w I went to the town site and I and I tried to learn about it. So I'm still learning. Um, I feel like the people that that are there for the most part are gonna in, are gonna take this challenge with with both hands, with you know, heart and soul, because we all love 
being able to, to practice our art or our artisanship. And so I, I didn't really come prepared to be the representative of the art, but I feel like it just needs you know flesh and blood. <laughs> A lot of times we felt like the artists were invisible. We never read about it in the paper. We never heard about it in the agenda. There's actually, but I did, I have talked to Mike several times, including today, and <clears throat> he's always assured me that we are seen as a valuable asset to, to the community. I don't think there's anything that is really stopping us from, you know, really thriving and having open studios and, and having concerts and just the, the idea that there's a, an auditorium, that there's a kitchen that, that, we can, that we can afford. I can afford to have that studio by myself. And I also think, you know, I don't know, I'm down the line. I'd like to, there to be some connection, possibly, with the college because sometimes people take a course, a college course, and all of a sudden they're a college student and they realize, wow, I could, I could actually get a de my degree at Cape Cod Community College. I'm not really representing them, but I just, you know, I'm percolating with, with uh, ways of going forward and I'm really looking forward to, to continuing to work with you and I'm glad that you are sympathetic to to just how um, challenged this document seems at this point. It, challenging, um, I mean, it, my first reaction was it feels very defensive, like, you know, who are we scared of here? Um, it didn't seem to bring out the, the qualities that perhaps it was intended too. And the idea of us divided, bidding against each other, awful. You know, frankly, I've never had that. I've never come across that as an artist. So I, I think you've gotten a good idea of my basic feeling about this. And also, it would be really helpful to see uh, Attachment 3. You know, it's kind of the absolutely the, the, the center of this whole operate the whole fulcrum, you know. Um, so it would be, I hope that there's time for us to look at the, uh, the licensing agreement, if that's what it's called. And I know that there's a time beyond which we can't talk to Kara about it. I, ho I hope that the license form attachment, whatever it, wherever it is, it is in the process is going to be accessible. It, it will have to be when we release the RFP. We can't release it without it. So we will have that as part of that. Okay. As soon as we release the final RFP, which tonight we're going to clean up the language on partnership and we're going to get rid of the um, higher money uh, part of that, which the bidding against each Great. other. So we're, we're getting there. I, I just want to endorse all the things, all the comments you've made tonight. and. Uh, and I, and I am incredibly grateful, you know, to, to have this ability to be part of this community. And I'm just excited to see how it can grow. Great. Thank you very much. Anyone else online wish to speak? Mr. Chair, if I could just step in for one second. Yes, of course. Kara, go ahead. Um, yeah, so just in relation to partnership, something you had mentioned earlier, um, I had a thought as earlier, later in the day, and I mean, if it's worthwhile for us to do this, this would be also a conversation with Megan. I've yet to address this is since right now our rates are set up as shared studio space, um, we could say like 202A and 202B, and we can factor out that square footage space based on the pricing module that we have. Given that I've already put the rates in front of you, I know that would kind of change the way it is because each studio space at the moment is set up as a single is the way we're looking at it, even though that they would form this partnership together. We could potentially, if it's permitted, set the shared spaces up so it's, you know, X number, Studio A, Studio B is this rate. I don't know if that's a possible Don't point. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Garrett, this, my only misgiving about that is you're presuming that every partnership is 50-50. And it may not well, be. Well, so we do have, yeah, no, John, absolutely. So some of them, um, most of the rates currently are split unless it's a three-person studio. The three-person studios do have a different variable in that. Um, again, we would break it down per the square footage that's available based on our current model that we have now. I guess my point was, do we even know that that's the, a space that's shared by three people means that they're all kicking in exactly the same share right now? Because I'm not sure that... No, that they're not. Because they're not. It's based on size. I, I don't mean that. I mean, we're sharing the room, say it's $600 in a month, and there's three of us. Are you absolutely positive that the arrangement is 222 for them in that particular room, or... Are there some rooms where somebody's like a junior partner and the other two are uh, they're tr master painters or master sculptors? So I can speak to what we have, and the doubles are 50-50, so one pays one half, one pays the other. The room that has three, there's one individual who pays less than the other two that are in there, and that is typically because that artist literally has a three-foot desk space that they work out of. That was my question about A, so, B, a B, and C denotations, because that would imply that everybody's doing the same in the way of kicking in, and I don't think that that's the case. Right, so my point would be that, you know, the studios that we know are doubles currently, we would draw the line that it, it already exists, to be honest with you. Some of them have already put tape down on the floor from years back. We would measure what that true square footage is. So 202A would be, say, 300 square feet. 202B would be 300 square feet. And each of those would have their own rate. The studio that has the three in it, the triple, would be then you know, broken out to say, OK, this amount of square feet based on you know, this space that we can easily identify label in that room would be this price. Excellent. Don? Yeah, let, let's just button this down. Uh, is there, there's nothing in this bid that you, or RFP that you're looking at that would preclude you from assigning disparate uh, shares in that uh, breakout, right? I mean, if, especially no, if we go with not. what's in there and it, it totals up to 550 because that's what we uh, agreed to for that particular room. Uh, with the way they want to divvy it up uh, as a pro rata for them sharing it uh, could be more or less for depending on who it is it's using more or less space right so the issue i see is you know the partnership language but also in the sense of if someone does break that license agreement because they just can't do it anymore what happens to that do the other two artists now have to g take up and you know figure out how they're going to split that and then pay that or is it can we go out to RFP for that space? So I think we have a couple different levels that we really have to examine. If all of a sudden we have three people in a room, one person needs to go, what what happens? Don, go and if we divvy it into the sense of the three pieces, A, B, and C, we're in a way protecting the artist from not being responsible for that leftover amount, and we're allowing for a new potential individual to come in. Thank you, Kara. Don? Yeah, this is actually to Megan. So if they... <clears throat> If we go with the, we've already figured out the fees. Mm -hmm. You're good with uh, that arrangement then? It could be divvied up into, uh, right. so it's not equally shared, uh, but they all share the room in some way or another? I do, I do agree with Kara that each individual artist would be in an individual license agreement. So they would pay $200 instead of four for the entire room. But if their roommate were to leave, um, then the artist A wouldn't have to cover the other per person's rent. Um, Kara could then refill it with uh, another. Well, I want to hear is if there's three people and that one person could get away with 150, is that what the other yes. two want? And the other two could be paying 250. Yes, we can. We can and that, that and within the context of this, that's okay with you? Yes. That's yes. fine. And I'm comfortable with Kara, uh, and I'll probably get myself in trouble, but Kara's running that portion of the building, and, and hopefully when we get to a point of licensing agreements, granted we have to sign them that we give the control to the department head that's running that side of the building. Right. That's what I was trying to get at. Okay. Mm -hmm. Julie? 
And the only other thing I'd ask is that, <coughs> is it possible to send out or, you know, a reminder or even um, put on the artist door a, a reminder about the deadline, maybe a couple days before, just so people don't miss out? Sure. Um, we can do that and we can announce it here. We can mm -hmm. have Kara announce it, put um, things in their mailboxes at their studios. Yeah, just for the idea. extra. And I, if I could, one clarification about having help with filling out their proposal, Kara or any of staff wouldn't be able to give suggestions on how to fill it out or what to write down. But if someone has a question, Kara or I are able to answer their question. We can't give them the answers to what they want to put on the, on the page, but we can provide answers to their questions on process. And okay. those questions would just have to be in writing where Kara could then redistribute the answers to everyone. Um, just keep that in mind. We're not saying, you know, as of next week, you can't talk to Kara anymore, but um, just keep in mind your questions will have to be written down and then answered to a group rather than just an individual. Thank you. Mary, anything? No, I'm all set. Julie? Nothing more. Larry? Nothing more. All right. Thank you, Kara. And thank you, Leanne. Yes. Can I get a motion on C? Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the 2023 Common Vintlers License Renewal for Sacquatucket Snack Shack doing business as Dockside Cafe at 715A Route 28. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye five zero. Old business, discussion on 2023 annual town meeting warrant articles. Larry, anything? Nothing. Don? Nope. Mary? Nope. Julie? Uh, the only thing i just waiting to hear back from Joe, I spoke with him about um, the child care stipend, and I know um, there's just a couple things he's waiting on from legal, so I just want to make sure we're in good shape on that. So. I'll remind him. Megan, I didn't see any change, but in the... Uh, in the warrant related to the land bank payment, somebody mentioned that that was an article being considered indefinitely postponed because it's in the budget. There was an issue, um, article four has a table and it identifies funding sources. So we are already identifying it in article four and we don't need to vote on it in a separate article. So there's a recommendation to indefinitely postpone that article if Article 4 gets approved. And it's still coming out of CPC funds yes. for Article 4? Yes. Thank you. Um, to, to Ann's point about um, the Cultural Center, 204 Sisson Road, whatever, middle school, high school, um, <laughs> she used the word thriving, and she mentioned the auditorium. And it is a recommendation of our finance committee to pull five hundred thousand dollars ish out of our request to the point where they're not making a positive motion on that article. And Kara left us, but I did have a conversation with Kara. The most frequently asked thing by people that have rented the auditorium in the past, are we gonna fix this so we can use it more? And it seems short sighted at best to take the funding away from making a space better that we're actually going to get revenue out of rather than just put the million nine into the building. So I hope that the artists and the artist families and everybody involved in a supporter of that building show up at town meeting and vote a positive vote on Article uh, 16. Uh, Article 15, we're going to get there eventually by getting that, that capital plan passed. But Article 16 is equally as important. So. I have nothing so other than that so why don't we we have to review and approve 2023 annual town meeting motions book um, we've reviewed it because it's in the packet I've reviewed it because I sat in a meeting last week and went over all the motions does anyone have any questions or comments Don yeah just to remind everybody uh, thank you mr. chair remind everybody that this is only absent of a positive motion from the Finance Committee, and we're on record as supporting either unanimously or with just one dissent every single article, so they're self-explanatory. They just put forward the articles with a proposed a positive motion uh, that they vote on. Larry? 
I have no comment on the motion. If they knew it, but it looked good to me. Eric? No, I'm fine. Julie? I'm good. Someone make a motion on that? Into I move that we accept uh, the uh, book of anticipated positive motions as written. Second. second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Contracts motion, please. Uh, I move that we vote to approve the contract extension with Atlantic Construction and Management Incorporated for owner's project management services for the Brooks Academy Museum renovations at, at a, an amount not to exceed $40,000. Second. Moved and seconded. Any comments? No. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. Assistant Town Administrator's report. Um, I just have one announcement. Um, we recently um, offered the position of assistant conservation agent to Leisha McKenna. She's our current executive assistant in the building department. Uh, she started as a temp and she's worked her way up in various departments and she has a background in environmental science and biology. And when the opening came up, when Melissa Millette resigned and took a, a, a promotion to another job, um, Leisha applied and has received that promotion. We're very, very grateful for her for applying. That is it. Excellent. That's fabulous. It's always great to see an internal promotion. Mm. She's, She's wonderful. She is wonderful. Selectman's report, Larry. Uh, none. Don. I got to get out more. <laughs> <laughs> Mary. Uh, I'm all set. Julie. No, congrats to Alicia. <coughs> That's good news. Congrats to her. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero.